viewers and subscribers. This is uh, Jeff here, SoundHow1973. Just thought I would do a little bit of an update on the uh, new file that I found this week. This has actually been a great week uh, for music, um, actually. Um, a lot of great finds. I got something special that I had ordered on eBay that finally showed up this week. I was really happy about that. And I'm really happy because uh, when I ordered it, the seller had listed it as, uh, you know, excellent condition. And uh, so, you know, you come to expect, sometimes you feel that people are maybe embellishing a little bit on the, on the, on the grades of their vinyl. But uh, I was pleasantly surprised when it showed up. I mean, he could have listed it as near mint. It was just a lot better than I anticipated. And for this particular release, it really made me happy. Uh, another thing that uh, I'm really excited about is that uh, last Saturday around uh, 9 o'clock at night, I was lying in bed on the iPad and I got an email from uh, MyDirect.com that was doing a promotion for Ghost. Uh, a lot of you that have seen my other videos uh, are aware that I'm a really big Ghost fan and uh, it was a uh, bundle pre-order special, very, very limited offer uh, for a great price. Um, you got the new album that's coming out in two weeks, 12-inch uh, on uh, Red Mile. You got a large t-shirt uh, with the cover of inch single, the cover of the 10 inch single that they released for Secular Haze, and the 10 inch single for Secular Haze backed with I'm a Marionette, which is an ABBA cover that uh, features Dave Grohl on drums. Now, I couldn't believe it because for the price they were selling it, I think it was 30, 34, or I can't remember now, 34 or 39.99 for the bundle, and, and it also included a uh, free download at midnight for the complete album, so you can have the album on start shipping the, the packages by, I think they said the 23rd of April. And in all honesty, I, I had already had the, the vinyl on pre-order from uh, my record, my favorite record store here in Montreal, but they couldn't, as, as hard as they tried, they couldn't nab that 10 inch for me. And I know people like Nico had, had seen it uh, or showed it in his video, he, he was able to get it. I tried to, you know, win a couple of auctions on eBay, but they're, they were just going for like over 100 bucks, so... I, I couldn't. I just couldn't justify paying that for 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 a little uh, ten-inch single. So when I saw that the offer was there to include the ten-inch, I jumped on it right away. Didn't even have to think twice. You figure thirty-nine ninety-nine. Um, you got the the new album that's going to be issued on red vinyl. You got the ten-inch and a T-shirt and a download at midnight for the whole album. You, you can't beat that. So. Within 24 hours, the deal was gone. So I'm, I'm thank, thank God I, I, I uh, ordered that bundle uh, that night. Literally uh, hit the the link and, and uh, ordered it immediately. And I told a friend of mine that the next day um, they weren't offering the 10 inches anymore, just the T-shirt and the album on my mile. So I was very very happy about that because um, the 10 inch looks so cool with the single of uh, Secular Haze. So I'm really happy that I'm going to own that. And I think I've mentioned in other videos that I'm going to be seeing them here in Montreal on May 7th at the Corona Theatre. Uh, also this week, uh, or it was the end of the week before, uh, I got an email at work for uh, one day early pre-sale on the KISS tickets, because KISS is coming to Montreal uh, July 29th, I believe. J July 27th or 29th. And uh, immediately went into the ticket queue, and I was lucky to pull up sixth row. Um, so I'm going to KISS, which I'm very, very, very excited about, and who knows, it could be, you know, I think time's running out a little bit on them, so it might be the last time that I get to see them before they pull the plug. And to see them sixth row, to see them that close and just kind of get in with the crowd and experience the show, it's going to be great on a, you know, hot summer night here in Montreal, hopefully, and uh, catch a few, you know, get a few beers before the show with some friends and just make a, a night out, make a night of it. The last time that I actually saw KISS up that close, I think I was 10th row, in 1997 on the reunion tour with Ace and Peter, um, that was amazing. And uh, I have been—I've been up in the stands on all the other tours that have hit the city, so I'm really happy about that. So um, that's it. So it's been a really exciting week, music-wise. And uh, I'm gonna just get into the vinyl now. I don't want to make this video too long, but I just wanted to share with you some of the titles I found because they're—they're they're great. So to start things off. This is uh, Sinead O'Connor, The Lion and the Cobra. Really love this album. Uh, Mandika, Jerusalem and Troy. 
It sounds amazing. I have not heard this album since the 90s. This was a huge, huge seller when I was in uh, high school. Uh, all, you know, a lot of my friends were into Sinead O'Connor and I haven't really heard it since then. So to spin this, I mean it's in mint condition, it just sounded incredible. Next one up is Kate Bush, Hounds of Love. Um, my all-time favorite Kate Bush song is Cloud Busting, and I also enjoy Running Up That Hill. Um, this brings back a lot of memories uh, when I was uh, uh, really young and just uh, constantly watching the Cloud Busting video. I actually taped it on a VHS tape and I would just watch it over and over and over. And there's something about Kate Bush's voice that's uh, just very intoxicating and very haunting. And I was very, very... It's actually not an album that you come across very much in the stores. I guess people hold on to it. Um, Lionheart and all that is stuff that will come across, but I was very, very happy to uh, pick this up in near mint condition. Next is Beach House, Teen, teen Dream. Uh, I have to say I'm a little embarrassed that uh, this. I'm a little late to the party regarding uh, Beach House. Uh, this album came out in 2010, and I, uh, although I've heard Bloom, I still haven't picked it up. Uh, I decided to give this a go first because uh, a couple of people I know said, although Bloom's good, this is actually better in their opinion, so I went with their suggestion. And I've been listening to this like five times a day. I absolutely love it. I begin my morning with it and I end my day with it. What, I'm, what I thought was really, really classy and cool that Sub Pop did is they included a download card so you can download the album on MP3. Which is, which is just great for someone like me because sometimes when releases comes out, I'm always kind of, you know, trying to decide what, well, you know, how much am I going to really like this artist? How much, you know, am I going to really want to collect their catalog? Should I just get it on CD or should I get it on vinyl? And uh, after reading a couple of comments online, I decided to just, you know, uh, splurge for the vinyl. And then when I got home and saw that it had a download code for the MP3, I just thought, I wish, you know what, I wish all new bands did it. I think, I think a lot of new bands do, but I, I just think that, uh, you know, more of them did it because it's such an, it, it just really helps you make the decision that, you know what, let's go for the vinyl and then I can download the album, put it on my iPod and then bring it everywhere with me, which which I've been doing. I mean, I'm, I've been listening to this album at work and in the car, so. Um, gonna pick up Bloom soon. I just, my new favorite band, just just love these guys. Such a good uh, good uh, album on double, double, double vinyl. This, I was really happy to nab. I have been looking for this album for, oh, the last four months, I would say, I've been seeing in the stores, but they've been in really bad condition, so I've left them behind. This is, um, uh, and I would say, a very good cover. The cover's a little beaten up, but the vinyl is absolutely mint, and it's uh, probably my favorite Rolling Stones record. I absolutely love this album, and to get it on the turntable and actually spin it the, the other day, it was just like, man, I was in heaven. It's so cool. Alright, next one up is Rod Stewart, I Night Out on the Town. Very, very cool album. I mean, uh, I grew up with Rod Stewart. My mother played Rod Stewart albums a lot, so I'm very familiar with his, with his music. Also, loved his work in the faces. And um, I don't even think you could... He's ever released a bad album. You know, I just love his voice. And the songs on here are just classic Rod Stewart. And it's a great album to put on Friday night after a long week at work, you know, a glass of red wine, just dim the lights and sit back and relax. Next up is The Smiths. This is Hatful of Hollow. This is a original uh, Canadian press on uh, Rough Trade Records. This is in really beautiful condition. I actually found this this morning. Uh, my girlfriend and I went out to, to some of the markets to get food for the week and I decided to uh, stop in at my favorite record store on the way home and nab this. Just, just beautiful. It's got the original sleeve. And what I really love about this album, I mean, I, I should say I'm a huge Smiths fan. I've been on a real Smiths kick this week listening to a lot of their stuff. And um, this is my first Smiths vinyl. I've got their stuff on CD, but um, never really come across an original pressing uh, on vinyl. A lot of the stores are carrying the reissues, which I'm not that interested in. I really want to get the originals. What I love about this is, um, although it was the second album that came out, a lot of people consider it their first for the versions because um, they're the same versions that appeared on the first album and uh, they're from the John Peel sessions, uh, the live radio show they did on the BBC. And I actually agree. I, I, you know, I mean, I love all the Smiths albums and especially the, the, the originals that showed up on the debut, but I really love the feel of these. They're a little bit more sped up and they just sound a little bit more organic and live and 
that when I want to listen to my favorite songs, the Smiths, I, I, I typically want to want to um, listen to the ones from the Peel session. So when I saw this, I, I grabbed it. Very, very, very happy about that. Next up is Scarecrow. Um, I actually got this thinking of LJ today because we were just talking about this that he showed in, in his last video. And although I already had it, I couldn't pass it up because it was $2.99 and it's mint all the way around. So it's actually an upgrade for me. So I um, didn't think twice. I actually found it. It was a couple of records behind the Smiths. So I figured, wow, I mean, grabbed it. I didn't even have to think twice. Next up, Judas Priest, Hellbent for Leather. Uh, love this Priest album. Judas Priest in Montreal is really difficult to find. I mean, uh, the reissues are easy enough to find, but it's the uh, originals that are very difficult. And if you do come across them, they're in really bad condition. This one was mint all around. Played this the other night. Couldn't believe it. Just sounds so awesome. So much warmer than the CDs. And uh, I just couldn't believe it when I pulled it out. Uh, I think this was $7. And it was just amazing condition. Whoever owned this album before took really good care of it. Next up is a band uh, some of you will have, well, watched uh, I think two videos back or three videos back. I said that I was just getting into Dream Theater and the new album with the new drummer, uh, or their last album I think from two years ago, Dramatic Turn of Events, I absolutely love. I've got it on CD, DVD, and I had, pre I had ordered um, a couple weeks ago the Images and Words because my favorite record store here in Montreal, um, they had a distributor that was able to nab me one of the um, 2000 numbered editions on black vinyl. This came in by accident. Um, they kind of mixed it up. Uh, I'm still going to get the images and words. Um, I'm sure it'll come in the next two weeks. But when they called me and, and told me, I said, well, you know what? Put it aside. I'll grab it anyways. I heard that the vinyl was a little bit more organic sounding than the CD, not as distorted. Uh, a little bit bigger and wider soundstage, a little more bass, and a lot more clarity on the drums. Um, and being a drummer, and especially loving uh, Mike Mangini's work, I figured, why not? So this is actually a really beautiful pressing. 180 gram vinyl, uh, gatefold, um, really beautiful sleeves. And um, just really, really nice artwork in the, in the gatefolds. Love the cover and the back. And it sounds amazing. I actually spun this the other night and it sounds absolutely incredible. Definitely an upgrade to the CD, so it's a nice addition to the collection. And I look forward to getting images and words. All right, next one up is Joni Mitchell, uh, Court and Spark. Um, this is one of my all-time favorite records. It, it brings me right back to my childhood when my mom used to spin her Joni Mitchell records. Unfortunately, my mom still has a couple of her albums, uh, but they're in really bad shape. I mean, I wouldn't even put it on my turntable and let my needle touch those grooves. So um, I came across this Friday night, mint condition. This is an original uh, Canadian press on uh, Asylum Records, and it sounds fantastic. Uh, this is also a nice original gatefold. With the original, uh, no, sorry, it doesn't uh, doesn't have the original sleeve, but it's got the gatefold, and she's just amazing. Like her her voice is just incredible, and these songs are, I mean, it's it's just sounds so natural. It, you know, if you close your eyes for a moment, the album sounds so good. You, you actually feel like you're in a cafe or you're in a jazz club, and, and she's playing live in front of you, and, and you, you kind of get that feeling when you when you put on her albums, and, and I really really love that when. You just feel like you're there in front of the musicians. Next one up is Billy Joel, Glass Houses. This is mint condition all around. This is a fantastic album. Uh, I'm still trying to track down The Stranger. I'm not really interested in getting the reissues. And uh, I haven't had any luck with The Stranger in the record stores. Um, they either uh, don't have them or they're, they're stocked in the reissue. Uh, but they had this, and it was in mint, so I, I nabbed it, and I spun this the other night, and it's just, wow, fantastic, it sounds awesome. The next two I'm really, really, really excited about. This is uh, Aerosmith's debut. Um, if you notice, for those of you that are a little bit familiar, this, this is actually a first, first, first Canadian pressing. The smaller photo here. And I was really excited and I didn't notice until I got home, but it's actually one of the, the actual first first pressings with the mis, misspell of uh, Walking the Dog. It's actually Walking the Dig. 
And when I did a little research on Discogs and, and uh, through Google, um, I picked this up for nine bucks and it's mint all around. And these, the, these copies uh, from the stuff I've seen on Discogs and eBay for the last two years have sold anywhere from 100 to over $350. Um, a lot of Japanese buyers try to get their hands on this. I didn't even know the history behind this record, and it turns out that um, about 10,000 copies were printed, and um, they s started selling once the street date for the release came up, and then they realized they had made the mistake with the walking the dig instead of walking the dog, and they quickly recalled them. And uh, when they re-released the album properly, they decided to make this bigger, so a lot of the copies that you see for sale on eBay, it's this photo all the way around. I have seen a couple that are like this, I think they're US pressings, but it says Walking the Dog on it. Um, so I was really happy about that, I, you know, I don't even think the store really knew what they had. Uh, to think they could have sold this for even $50, considering its condition, uh, and the misprint, the original cover. So I was, uh, I felt I really lucked out on that one, very, very happy about that, and of course it sounds amazing. The last one that I'm going to show is Iron Maiden's Live After Death. Uh, I've been slowly trying to complete my Iron Maiden collection on vinyl. I've got everything under the sun and the moon on the CD, but uh, not uh, at the time, not a lot on vinyl because uh, I had sold everything and trying to rebuild. So uh, the only thing now that I'm missing is Number of the Beast and Seventh Sun and everything else I have. And I'm trying to get European presses. This is a Holland press. This is the one that I was saying at the beginning of the video where I, I bought it on uh, eBay and I felt the gentleman um, didn't really do it justice. He, he could have listed this in, in much, much higher um, condition. It, it just arrived in beautiful condition and the vinyl is flawless. It plays beautifully. And um, I've heard a lot of great things about Holland presses. It comes with the original sleeves. There. This too, this is for uh, LP1. It's there. And the original booklet, which is also very, very cool. There. And this was a really difficult album to find. You know, a lot of the times the conditions aren't that great. And um, they go for so much money. And then when you add the shipping on top of that, it's just too much for me. And um, there was an auction that I uh, noticed, I would say, um, a couple of couple of uh, weeks ago and it was such at a, at a, at a very low um, low amount so I waited until uh, I would say the last minute to make a bid I just kind of was watching it for, for, for seven days and um, right when it got down to about 20 seconds uh, I made my bid I put in my max bid and to my surprise I won it it was one of the bidders that was trying to increase his bid, but he didn't overmatch mine, and I ended up winning with about 20 seconds to go. So I think I paid $10 for it in all, and then another uh, $9 or so for shipping. So I was blown, blown away, considering the condition, and it's one of my favorite Maiden albums. Uh, I mean, although it's a live album, it's the versions of the songs that are just, they're on fire uh, during the set. And, um, it's the complete classic uh, uh, set list that you would expect uh, from Maiden. And on top of that, I mean, I, I don't really want to get too much down on CDs, but in my estimation, the CDs never did this justice. It just always sounded a little bit off, especially the remasters. They're, they're horrible. Um, very similar to Ozzy's Speak of the Devil. It just never sounded right to me on CD, having uh, started out with the vinyl myself. So um, when I finally got the vinyl for that one, I was very, very, very happy. So that's it. Nice new addition to the Maiden collection. Uh, I'm very happy that it's a Holland press. And uh, now, like I said, I've only got two more to go. Seventh Sun and um, Number of the Beast. So that's it. That's it for my update, guys. Um, thank you for watching. I uh, appreciate any comments. And for those of you that aren't subscribed yet, please feel free to subscribe. Um, I check uh, my channel uh, every week and, I'm, and already the jump to uh, 134 subscribers um, just uh, I'm honored that uh, anyone would take the time to subscribe to my channel and, and watch and, and uh, comment and um, that's it so I, I'd like to thank all my new subscribers over the last couple of weeks you, you make me feel very good I just feel like you know uh, there's somebody out there watching and, 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 and liking what I'm doing so even if it's just a handful of you 
well then I'm, I'm here to, to serve that handful of people and um, just share with you my passion, share with you my collection and of course I'm always on um, looking at what you guys are doing and commenting and um, getting the inspiration from you guys. Always love to see what you're buying or the gear that you're buying, changes to your music room, the updates that you fill us in on week to week. Uh, I love it. So that's it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, everybody, and uh, we'll catch up soon. Bye.